Hello guys. How are you today? Today we are going to talk about the most challenging exam in the country. UPSC names. We hope that the result, net result will come tomorrow. It was supposed to come today. I hope it will be tomorrow and you will get your results. You will pass with JRF. Be happy and hopeful. Be thankful that we are learning so much. I am good, absolutely. With God's grace. So guys, ready for UPSC English main? Even if you are not writing it, you can, we can still talk about it because it will help us in so many exams in so many ways. And also many of you might get inspired to write UPSC English main exam as well. To take English literature in UPSC mains. Hena? So, we begin. Is it wise to choose English literature as UPSC main optional subject? Is it wise to choose English literature as UPSC main optional subject? What do you say? I think it is good if you can choose English literature as UPSC mains. If you are good at English, if you are ready to do hard work, then it is good to choose, I think. Well, uh, this is only an introductory session. I don't know if I want to do it as a course. This is only one session that we are doing, first session, uh, where I'm going to introduce a lot of things. If you are an English literature graduate or postgraduate, then you can choose English literature mains. Even if your graduation or postgraduation is in another subject, even then you can choose, but if you are English literature graduate or postgraduate, it will be very good if you can choose English literature mains. But you can't take it for granted. You have to do a lot of work. You should be passionate about literature, that we all are. Thanks to our 10 p.m. sessions, we are all passionate about literature, aren't we? If you have time and interest in, in reading and evaluating literature, you need time. You need to read all the books. You need to learn to write critical commentary. I'm saying that it is wonderful to give it a try. If you give it a try, your understanding of literature and your experience in writing everything will improve so much. It is possible that you will pass. So you should first and foremost really find time and start reading. If you have a good command over English language and if you are comfortable in expressing your opinions in English, today I will ask you, I will show you question paper also. We will look through the question paper also. Very high standard questions. But first listen to all this and then we will look at the question paper. So you should have good command over English language. You should be comfortable in expressing your opinions in English and you should have opinions in English. What are the benefits of choosing English literature? You can read and enjoy a lot of important canonical texts. If you choose English literature, it will give you the opportunity to read, enjoy, study a lot of canonical texts. Very important. It will help you in many exams. 
Questions are directly from the text prescribed. Not like net. Not roundabout questions. Only some questions, some texts are prescribed. Questions are always from the text. Another advantage is very few people choose the subject English mains as optional. Hence, competition is less. Why very few people choose is because there is a lot of studying to do, a lot of reading to do. Now, guys, with our coaching program, with my course, etc., very good foundation you get. Those who do courses with me, for example, have very good foundation. With that, it is easy to do English literature. So, if you have done any of our courses or even 10 p.m. life, you must already have got a lot of foundation already. SM, even though only subjective questions come, when you write answers, you have to show very wide knowledge. It is not enough to know only the text. Questions look simple. They are not simple also. But you have to have real knowledge. What are the advantages for English postgraduates or graduates? You know, if you are English postgraduate or graduate, you might know more literary history and theory than others. Knowing literary history and theory is extremely important. Because questions should be answered from a very wide perspective. You might have studied at least half of the prescribed syllabus in your MA. So none of the books is actually new. They are all canonical major books. You might have written enough critical essays and would have experience in writing long answers. Lots of um, essays and things you might already have written. So preliminary, if you get coaching and if you study, you can pass. Preliminary, you have to get coaching and you have to systematically study for one year or so and then uh, you can pass. Right now, before studying, it looks like impossible. But lots of people actually pass preliminary. It is in mains that they don't clear. Many people pass preliminary. It is not impossible. Now, what you need you should have knowledge of history, literary history, social history. You should have knowledge of the genre and context. For that, read about the author, read about the text, read about the age. I am telling you, if side by side for net when you prepare, if side by side you prepare for English mains also, and then you pass preliminary, then net you will pass with JRF and English mains also you may pass if you study well. So read about the author text and age. Then you should know the text itself. There are only few texts compared to net syllabus is less. You have to read the original text several times. The poems, novels, plays etc. You have to read several times. Giving yourself time in between. In 3-4 days if you read one text several times that is not good. Some uh, time should pass. Some days, weeks etc. should pass. You should read one novel. Let some time pass. Read other things. Read criticism. Then again read the novel like that. You should have command over critical reading. Oh my God, I'm sorry, you can't read. Now you can read. You should have command over critical reading. What do you mean by that? You should read, read famous essays on literature. As well as well-written essays on literature. Some famous essays by critics you should read. You should also read well-written essays. Not only to get information, but also to learn how to do critical analysis. You know, when you read uh, well-written essays by 
accomplished people you will know how to start writing how to give introduction how to add point one by one how to argue and how to give a conclusion you know like that when you do reading of essays you should make a note of how people have written good people have written and you should have command over no language you should learn academic words and expressions you should give special attention to correctness you should have very good command over language writing skills you should improve i am saying that whether you pass civil service or not every one of you should prepare some of you will pass some of you may not pass but if you prepare all of you will increase your skills you will develop your skills you will have increased uh skills in writing reading so don't think negative give it a try because anyway you have only benefits if you pass civil services very good otherwise also your critical acumen will increase your knowledge will increase your writing skills will improve so how do you start planning and preparation check the detailed syllabus if you are young if you are still in your ba there is still lots of time lots of time you can prepare and write by the time you pass ma if you want so you can start planning and preparation now check the detailed syllabus check the previous year question papers i'll show you collect all the text prescribed in the syllabus original text a good literary history book you need that you need even if you are preparing for net you need a good literary history book you need poems you can collect them from websites you need to read original texts from the library or online sources <clears throat> so collect all the original texts very importantly know which edition know who are the translators if it's relevant know who are the original publishers you know this kind of preparation is required for net also any post graduate in english any professional in english should study like this they should read original text they should know who are the translators what are the names of the publishers if you study like this you will get very close to passing net as well as civil services you will become very good professionals there is it is wrong to think that for net you prepare some in some way for civil service you prepare in some way whatever you prepare somehow you pass exam not like that you have to study thoroughly if you are in your ba or ma if you are still studying there is still time better late than never as soon as possible start studying in this manner how do you study read read all the original texts several times if you can read literary history along with the texts when you study thomas hardy when you read thomas hardy you should read about victorian period along with it understand the social political and cultural context of the work you should not know you should know not only the text you should know the text in detail every single event in the text every single character everything you should know in detail just imagine if we study a lot of text like that how wonderful we will become what amazing scholars we will become you will very soon be far ahead of me you will be better than me if you study like this study the text in detail it is only a matter of one or two years look at your life you have 50 60 years of work ahead of you probably you will work 50 years 20 30 years until you retire after that also you can work hai na out of 30 to 50 years of career 
What is two years of preparation? Nothing. You should, in a dedicated manner, prepare for two years. If you prepare like this, you will definitely clear net. You will clear many exams. While you are studying for all these exams, why don't you study properly and prepare for civil service also? If you are passing with a good rank, wonderful. Some are, at least some of the uh, you know services you can get. If not civil service or IAS, some other service you can get. Don't think negative. Aim high. Don't think I can't do, I don't have enough knowledge, it needs dedication, I can't do it. Never think like that. Aim high, do the best. It is when you do the best that you, that is how you become the best. Uh, while doing MA, I studied for civil services for one year. I did not write the exam because I decided I wanted to be a teacher. But that studying I did really helped me. So, Read the literary text, original text very well. Understand social, political, cultural context of the work. All of this you are already doing. Why don't you do for civil services? And then spend six, six months, one year. After you clear net, continue English literature studies. Now you start studying for mains. And then next year, after you clear MA with JRF, uh, sorry, net with JRF, you will have covered English mains topic you know half and then you start preparing for prelims also do give your best trying what matters is the trying if you try your standard will increase you will get many jobs you will be able to clear many exams net you will clear easily so read the original text Understand social, political and cultural context of the work. Uh, also read criticism of the work from a historical perspective. For example, if you are reading The Tempest, you have to read about the socio-political history of that period. Then collect a lot of important essays from 17th century, 18th century, 19th century, 20th century. Collect a lot of important critical essays. They are all available in the internet. And read about these essays. Try to read these essays. At least a few books of English literature we should study like this. And then you will understand how criticism of the tempest has changed down the years. You should know how criticism of a particular book or author has changed down the years. You should know how the perceptions of a text have changed. What did people say about the Tempest or Shakespeare in the 18th century? How did their view change? How did people's view change in the 19th century? In the 20th century, in what ways have Shakespeare been read? Or Hardy been read? Or Charlotte Bronte been read? Like that, you should study the history of criticism of the work also. Read theoretical readings of the works and authors. For example, when you read Shakespeare, you have to read new historicism, cultural materialism. If you study at least some like this, you will be amazing scholars. Why do we have 10 p.m. course? I am not somehow making you pass exams. I am not giving you some questions here and there. I want all of you to be amazing scholars. I want you to be like central university professors. I want you to be like <coughs> postgraduates from Oxford or Cambridge. <coughs> we can try. We can try to be like them. If you try, if you are sitting here, you will increase, you will go up. At least you will grow a lot. Isn't it? So set your standards high. Don't think low. Think high. Then you will have amazing careers. Go towards the civil service. Wonderful if you reach it. Even if you don't reach it, you will completely change. 
you will completely become amazing scholars that is what we want so at least the prescribed books in civil service exam at least those if you study like that you will easily get rf read theoretical readings of the works and authors in the beginning reading is difficult you can't understand you you don't have speed but you should try you should try to increase your speed as you consistently do things you will improve did you understand and focus deeply when you read focus deeply on character narrative devices genreic features when we look at the question paper you will understand all these are very important as you read note down your observations and opinions every day you don't have to come and watch kalyani vallath or somebody like that desperately in order to study if you do like this in one year you will be far better than kalyani vallath in one or two years probably if you sit and study you will be the best so aim to be the best did you understand that is what i did i studied 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 and consolidated all the reading and studying and somehow i became a uh, somewhat good teacher i am still studying i have to still improve so like that let us all improve and do better and better in our careers have focus do necessary things don't be scattered people who have done my full course especially many of you will be here who have done my full course you have a solid foundation with that you can you can easily do this even if you have not done my full course you have already got the methodology from me even if you have never bought any book or done any course with me you have done 10 pm course na you have got methodology all this is methodology so follow it make better opportunities for yourself you know you if you are sitting here you will be sitting there next year you can progress a lot so note down your observations and opinions practice writing essays based on your notes make notes and just like that start writing essays every 2 3 days you should write one essay every day if possible write a short answer based on your notes so that you improve your writing the problem with many of us is we never write because of objective type exam especially we never write this is very dangerous so find time if you are housewives or already uh, 30 years old or you know if you have other responsibilities in life don't feel stressed at least a little bit you can do but if you are a post graduate student if you have time at home if you have if you don't have many responsibilities yet then you have no excuse you have to do it you have to uh, follow this and try so practice writing essays based on your notes write every day if possible how to write i will tell you and when you are writing an essay write a good introduction a very good introduction showing your knowledge of the context of the production and reception of the text how the text was produced or written also how the text was read by people reception of the text that means criticism production of the text is important that means how the text was written context of writing context of reading also important when you are writing an essay answer to the question directly answer to the question do not bluff with other things you know when we are writing a ma exam we many times bluff they will ask you one question like this you will answer here you won't answer directly you will say other things also you may get marks in ma but not in civil services do not bluff answer to the question look at the issue from different perspectives as possible look at the issue from different perspectives when they are, when we look at the question paper after this you will understand look at the issue from different perspectives show the breadth of your reading as well as the depth of your perceptions 
if you read you should read broadly you should have a lot of broad knowledge you should also have deep knowledge both you should show okay you have a prescribed syllabus you can stick to the syllabus and read like that but when you write the essay you should show the breadth of your reading anywhere when you write essay not only in civil services as well as depth you should go deep into characterization themes club your knowledge with your own critical insights from books you have got knowledge combine that knowledge with your own thinking your own analysis suddenly one day it doesn't come you have to write a lot read a lot then it will come give lots of textual references can you read properly can you see properly read give lots of textual references when you are writing show that you know the text quote from the text uh, quote incidents from the text some dialogues small dialogues from the text at least talk about images motives symbols from the text show that you know the year in which it was written what other things happened in that year all these are very important whenever you write an essay show textual references and then cross connect with other authors other texts and characters appropriately wherever it is relevant you have to cross connect compare this text or this character with other similar characters when you read a critical commentary you will get all this and frame a powerful conclusion that summarizes the essay always remember you need to write at least for 5 6 months every day you need to write at least 100 essays only then your best style will evolve after i if you have written no essay till now or if you have only written one or two essays then you won't be able to understand how to write please write more and more write lots of model essays in point form before hand itself before the exam itself in point point form you should write model essays bahut chota hai font i will i will uh, help you so what i was saying is you should write lots of model essays before the exam itself now can you read uh, look at the question paper sorry look at the syllabus and question paper and write lots of model essays and avoid grammar and spelling mistakes grammar and spelling mistakes very bad if you do that you won't get marks listen once again write a good introduction answer to the question do not bluff look at the issue from different perspectives show the breadth of your reading as well as depth of your perceptions club your knowledge that you get from books with your own thinking your own critical insights many times exam in civil service exam questions they ask is what do you think what are your views like that they are asking give lots of textual references incidents dialogues images show that you have read the text and cross connect with other authors frame a powerful conclusion very very important write lots of model essays in point point form before while you are preparing before the exam for lots of questions you should write model essays avoid grammar and spelling mistakes do you get me and uh, when you himanshu i think that is because of lack of practice when you get practice you can avoid it while you are preparing you should edit your own essays improve while you are reading you should read and see how other people have written good essays what are the books and syllabus you should follow books you can refer other than original works include literary histories very good literary history is extremely important like we say in uh, net coaching also literary terms and glossary is very important that all that i have introduced to you already m a m h abrams um cardan chris baldick literary history means 
Poplowski, David Deiches, all these books I have here. Paul Poplowski, David Deiches, Routledge uh, companion series is there. Collect these books. You should also read criticism and theory books. As I have told you, M.A.R. Habib and other uh, major criticism and theory books. Raman Selden. Go for very established writers and read them. Major critical readings on authors and texts. You should look at how uh, major critics have written about authors and texts. For example, if you are reading Shakespeare, studying Shakespeare, you should definitely read E.M.W. Tilliard, then A.C. Bradley, you can read Coleridge, you can read Caroline Spurgeon, you can read Ernest Jones. At least a few, <clears throat> few articles like that you should read. <coughs> then, syllabus includes... Around 14 novels. 14 novels is not a big deal. You can read 14 novels in 3 months. 5 plays. Then around 60 poems. All these poems are not big. Some are very small. So plan accordingly. In one year, how many times can I read these novels and plays? How much time will I devote to reading about these books? If you plan, if you are in BA or even MA, plan. I would always say start studying English mains first. Slowly start studying prelims. But English mains after you reach half, then you can study main, uh, prelims also. The biggest problem people do is, first they spend one year for prelims. And then they don't study mains properly. The advantage of studying for mains first is that you will pass net and other exams also in between. Did you understand? It gives you more career choice. Did you understand? So if you start preparing for mains like this and then one year dedicated you prepare for prelims. Mean while you prepare for mains you can study for prelims also. But focus on mains until you pass net. And you should have basic understanding of all this as well as history. Now question paper pattern. We will look at the question paper also. Optional subject of civil service mains contains two papers. Paper 1 and paper 2. Each paper is 250 marks with a total of 500 marks. The English literature optional subject consists of two papers. Designed to test first hand critical reading of text. You have to read the text, otherwise you can't pass. With summary, you can't pass. Paper 1 covers 1600 to 1900. Paper 2 covers 1900 to 1990. That means uh, 20th century. So, there will be two compulsory questions in each paper. Short answer questions related to topics. Critical analysis of unseen passages. But they give the name of the author. So, these questions are there. I will show you the questions and you will understand. In paper 1, you need knowledge of the Renaissance, Elizabethan and Jacobian drama, metaphysical poetry. What prevents you from studying all this? Anyway, you are studying all this. Study thoroughly, originally. Epic and mock epic. Our encyclopedia will be a huge help. But you should read other things also, if possible. Neoclassicism, satire, romantic movement, uh, then rise of the novel, Victorian age. All this you understood, na? There, I will share this PDF in Telegram group. I will share PDF and uh, syllabus also, I mean, question papers also in Telegram group. Don't worry. Then, detailed study. William Shakespeare's two plays. King Lear and Tempest. This is the syllabus. John Dunn, Canonization, Death Be Not Proud, The Good Morrow, On His Mistress Going to Bed, The Relic. Remember, these are all prescribed in our universities. And important for net also. John Milton, Paradise Lost, Book 1, 2, 4 and 9. Then, Alexander Pope, 
the rape of the lock ambiga maths is not a problem maths is the most interesting subject in the world if you get the right kind of approach if you get the right kind of teacher then you will fall in love with maths in paper one there is but it is not anything you should be afraid of you are fear of maths is a an unfounded fear then alexander pope the rape of the lock william wordsworth all these poems all short short poems immortality or tintin abbey three years she grew in sun and shower she dwelt among the untrodden ways michael resolution and independence the world is too much with us Milton, thou shouldst be living at this hour, upon Westminster Bridge. All very famous. Tennyson's In Memoriam, Henry Gibson's A Doll's House. Then paper one section B है. Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels, Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, Henry Fielding's Tom Jones, Charles Dickens's Hard Times, George Eliot's Mill on the Floss. Uh, Thomas Hardy's Test of the Devils, Mark Twain's The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. If you have fear of maths or if you have any problem with maths, what you are you should be saying is, I am afraid of maths. I have a problem. I can't study. That is not what you should say. You should say, I am going to solve this problem. I am going to study and understand properly, so that I won't be afraid. I am going to. Solve my problem. That is what you should say. You are teachers. You are adults. We don't run away from things. We have to solve them. Paper two, they call modernism. Poets of the thirties. Stream of consciousness novel. Absurd drama. Colonialism and postcolonialism. Indian writing in English. Marxism, psychoanalysis, feminism, postmodernism. Which of these is difficult? All of these are essential for any exam, isn't it? Hena. Now questions are not easy. I am telling you, but William Butler Yeats's poems, Easter, nineteen sixteen. It is not enough to know the summaries of these poems. You should know critical analysis also. A prayer for my daughter, sailing to Byzantium, the tower, among school children. Leda and the Swan, Meru, Lapis Lazuli, the Second Coming, and Byzantium. It is not enough to read a summary. It is not enough to read in Spark Notes or Cliff Notes. It is necessary to read in books. We have to find books where critics have talked about these poems. If you spend some time, you will be able to find it also. I can also help you eventually. T. S. Eliot's Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock, Journey of the Magi, Burned Norton, W. H. Auden's Partition, Muse de Beauvoir's In Memory of W. B. Yeats, Lay Your Sleeping Head, My Love. Did you know he wrote this poem? The Unknown Citizen. They always ask about unknown citizen. Consider Mund Mundus et Infants, The Shield of Achilles, September one, nineteen thirty-nine. petition at least remember the titles everyone they might ask you in net also then john osborne's look back in anger samuel beckett's waiting for godo it is it is necessary to read these books and poems several times not only for civil service exam but also for net actually harivansh I am not start going to. I am not doing this video because I want to start a course and collect your fees or anything. I am doing this video only to teach you and motivate you. I don't know if uh, I. I immediately I won't be able to start because I am fully tied up with net and other things. But probably in another three four years probably I will start. But meanwhile you can study and pass. I am there for you. I am telling you how to study. I will do half the work for you anyway, and you can do the rest of the work. Philip Larkin's many poems are there. Next, please, a yo. Next, please, is one poem. Next, please, then deceptions, afternoons. Remember these titles, especially for net days. Mister Blini, they will ask about these books. Okay, Th these poems in net also. 
For net also we have to study all this. A.K. Ramanujan is looking for a cousin on a swing, a river, famous or everywhere prescribed. Of mothers among other things. You don't need me, Zafar. You should start on your own. Every single thing, why do you need from me? I am just a mortal. I don't know anything. I am there to help as much as I can. There are other people also to help. Meanwhile, you start on your own. You should pass because of your work. You can do it. If I can do it, you can also do it. Do you understand? Don't wait for anybody. If I am there, well and good. Okay, use my material and classes and everything. If I am not there, no problem. Still you will do. Like that you should think. A.K. Ramanujan's poems. These are all important. In net and other exams, they are always asking all this. Then, paper 2, section B. Joseph Conrad's Lord Jim Array, Heart of Darkness, nahi hai. James Joyce's portrait of the artist as a young man. They have asked questions from here. D.H. Lawrence's Sons and Lovers, E.M. Foster's Passage to India. Then, uh, Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway. Raja Rao's Kantapura, V.S. Nepal's House for Mr. Biswas. There is no tweaking or anything. If you look at the question paper, you will understand that. If you study these books, you will be able to answer. If you don't study, you won't be able to answer. You have to study in detail. Now, the question papers. Are you ready for the question papers? First, we will look at paper 1. Guys, I will move it this side so that you can see properly. Dekho. There are eight questions divided into two sections. Okay. This is 2019 question paper. Write short notes on the following. Paper 1 is easy because it is uh, 14th century to 19th century. Look at this. Write short notes on the English Renaissance and its impact. You have to write a short note on the English Renaissance and its impact. Of course, you have to collect points, write better answers, read more, then only write. Characteristics of the Victorian age. You have to write about socio-political context. You have to write about all the events that happened in the Victorian age briefly. You have to analyze it a little bit. You have to give examples. Are a general paper hai, Rahila. It is called preliminaries. Preliminary. Then, characteristics of the Victorian age. How do you do? You, you, when you see this question paper, like this characteristics of every age you should prepare. You should sit and collect information on everything that is important and write more and more points. Like I make my PPT, like my encyclopedia. My encyclopedia was made like that. You know what? I started making encyclopedia when I myself prepared for civil services. I was preparing for net and JRF and civil services as a student. That is when I started making our encyclopedia. So like that encyclopedia... Like we have material in encyclopedia, you have to prepare notes. So, for every age, you should prepare like that. The unique features of metaphysical poetry. It should not read like an essay written by a BA student. It should read scholarly. Did you understand? You know, questions are easy. But answer should have high standard. Answer should not look very simple. The difference between burlesque and mock epic. Novel as a moral fable. So there you have to read extra. You have to understand what is meant by moral fable. You have to look at the history of the novel from 18th century. You have to apply on text and you have to explain with examples. Okay? Within the word limit. 150 words only. And you have to answer each question. There is no choice. Then... Answer all the following. Discuss the significance of the storm scene in King Lear. It is not uh, enough to uh, write a summary of the storm scene. You have to read about what critics have said about it. 
uh, Rahul is asking me about novel as a moral fable. Moral fable means uh, you have to look at the history of the novel. In the 18th century realistic period, how the moral was closely associated with the middle class and how it fell into moralizing like in Samuel Richardson etc. And then you have to look at how the moral structure of the 18th century novel was countered by other 18th century writers, how they redefined uh, culture and morality and uh, all giving examples. And then how again in the Victorian period you have to relate it. Many things that are there in the encyclopedia are points here. Many of you might have it already. For example, I always connect it with the rise of empiricism, the rise of methodism, the rise of science, science uh, and deism, religious uh, principle of deism. All this are related to novel as a moral fable. The rise of the novel had roots in religious movement of deism, in empiricism or belief that experience is important, in the belief that uh, middle class culture is the mainstream culture, in um, writing uh, from the 18th century, reacting against the 16th century picaresque novels and rogue tales. As a rejection of the 16th century, 17th century rogue tales, novel emerged as a moral fable. And then you can, after briefly, you know, when you write an answer, like this short answer, avoid filler words, write more and more content words. Point, 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 like that it should be. In every sentence, you should string more and more points and make it rich. So, when you write like that, there will be lots of points. You can show your knowledge greatly. But don't make it too dry. It should also be readable. That is the style in which you should read. And you can briefly in the concluding part, you can refer to what happened after. After the 18th century, next, uh, next uh, novel as a moral fable in the 19th century. And then how everything changed with anti-humanism and... Uh, avant-garde and more, uh, modernism. That can be the ending. So that is how you write novel as a moral fable. So you need a wide knowledge which luckily for you, for British literature we already have. Now, uh, significance of the storm scene in King Lear. You should know a summary of the storm scene of course, but you should also know critical interpretations. Uh, how critics have talked about it, that also you need to know. And uh, what is the significance of it in the play itself? That is the climax. That is the play where, that is the scene where King Lear and Gloucester, two fathers who made mistakes in their judgment, they are meeting. How the storm scene is full of symbolism. You have to quote from the storm, storm scene. You have to give lines from the storm scene like that. You have to write. Comment on the diction of Wordsworth's poetry, making a reference to the poems prescribed in the syllabus. You have to talk about Wordsworth's diction or choice of words. You have to refer to preface to lyrical ballads, his statement that poetry should be written in the very language of men, in a state of vivid sensation. You have to illustrate it with uh, the poems that are prescribed. And then you can refer to Coleridge's criticism of Wordsworth's uh, diction, practice, etc. Then comprehensive answer. Like I said, uh, you have to show that you know the context, that you, have, you know the text. You have to give evidence by quoting from the text, etc. And then you have to show that you know criticism. It is not impossible. It is easy. If I can do it, you can do it. Show that Pope's use of the machinery of the sylphs heightens both satire and poetry. That is a challenging question again. The machinery of the sylphs, how it creates satire. The sylphs are like the other. They comment on human action. Their presence in the play, in the poem, make us understand the silliness and pettiness of the human beings and their choices and actions. At the same time, the sylphs have an airy quality. You know, they are, a be they are beautiful beings. 
they perform wonderful roles within the narrative and how they add to the beauty of poetry you can again uh, illustrate with quotations etc aerials some quotations etc if you start preparing for this it is going to be easy right now if you don't if you have to prepare then it will be difficult then answer all of the following in celebrating love as the supreme the only thing in the world done went to a new twisted kind of hyperbole discuss compare dunn's hyperbole with petrarchan hyperbole Hi petrarchan hyperbole is romantic petrarchan hyperbole is conventional but, but uh, dunn is shocking dunn is twisting uh, the hyperbole using metaphysical conceit syllogism Uh, etc so you have to illustrate it with examples to what extent milton justified the ways of god to man in his paradise lost you have to look at paradise lost in general you have to look at the character of satan deeply character of eve and adam deeply and are you just uh, is milton justifying the ways of god to man or is milton justifying man that is the question Milton is definitely justifying man also. M Milton is justifying Satan and man also. That is why Blake said Milton is the devil's party without knowing it. So you have to look at why Satan is the real hero of Paradise Lost. Satan is presented like a human son, and then you have to look at Eve's character and Adam's character, and how Milton is speaking from a slightly anti puritan point of view uh and then you should argue that that is the sign of milton's greatness and you can say this is the element of hellenism justifying the ways of god to man is hebraism but justifying man is hellenism so milton is writing like a classical writer using hellenism do you understand what i'm saying it is not difficult i can if you want i can do a detailed session taking questions and showing how to answer questions it is not difficult one thing i will suggest is you should get the encyclopedias if you get the encyclopedia as, as well as our notes which are actually the draft of the upcoming encyclopedias so many of these things are already there but even if you don't know if, if you don't know don't want my notes it's okay but it will take a little more time because my notes i have prepared over many years anyway whether you buy notes or not is the not the main thing the main thing is this perspective from which you should collect information so i can do one session for you if you are really interested how to answer like this from different perspectives is this helping you guys is the session helping you or am i boring you are you thinking oh she is saying a lot of things i don't understand i don't want to do it i hope you that you're not feeling like that anyway answer all of the following meanwhile will you please like the video also guys answer all of the following in memoriam is not merely an elegy but a philosophical poem too do you agree with this statement yes in fact in memoriam is less elegy and more philosophical poem he is actually not showing that much grief there he is writing more about the philosophy of life what are the different philosophical ideas he has talked about in in memoriam what is the tone and mood with which he has talked about it how is it related to victorian period and the rest of tennyson's poetry like that you should read and write discuss ibsen as a dramatist of realism you should write what is realism realism is not only representing life in a realistic manner it is also talking about the motives of characters you should write about how realism developed from what realism developed and how ibsen used realism in his play I can take these questions and I can give you points and explain more if you want one day. Uh no problem Preeti you can listen to the text if you want no problem at all. Then you can relate it to realism 
used in drama by other writers. Ibsen was not only a realist, he was also a naturalist. So Ibsen's naturalism also you should write about there. Relate it, it to other realists. Comment on forgiveness and freedom as the two key notes of the tempest. Forgiveness. How far forgiveness is a theme. Forgiveness at different levels. Prospero is forgiving. Alonso, Sebastian and Antonio. Prospero is forgiving. Caliban. And uh, what is, how is forgiveness related to Christianity? How is forgiveness related to uh, Prospero's image as Superman? And how is uh, forgiveness related to tragic comedy? Because if it is a tragedy, instead of forgiving, he would only take revenge. Here revenge is avoided. And how is forgiveness related to Elizabethan period and Jacobian period? Then freedom. Related to the text, what are the different kinds of freedom? Then you should write about, uh, you know, how are the different kinds of freedom different? What is the role of freedom in other plays of Shakespeare? What is, how far is freedom related to the period in which it was written? How far is it related to the genre in which it was written? That is how you should write this one. Now, section B. Study the following poem and answer all the questions below. Of course, preparing for this will also help you in net. How do you prepare for unseen poems and passages? By reading more and more passages and poems. There are so many syllabi, uh, sorry, question papers where you can find poems. There will be books. I am also bringing out a book very soon on uh, poetry appreciation on reading comprehension so when you read think of questions like this when you just go reading many many poems and then answer to yourself these questions read 25 poems for all the 25 poems you answer this question what is the theme of the poem what is the mood of the poem what is the imagery in the poem like that you should think for every poem and then read extra and find out answers. So you can easily prepare like that. Then answer all of the following. First one is from Gulliver's Travels. Man is utterly wicked, desperate and imbecile as portrayed in the fourth voyage of Gulliver. Do you agree? Yes. This is related to today only I was teaching in complete course. Uh, sorry, criticism and theory course that, that is running right now. How this Gulliver's Travels is related to Scriblerianism and Thomas Hobbes's criticism, uh, Thomas Hobbes's philosophy. When you write answers, you should relate it to Scriblerianism. How Scriblerian club wanted to uh, sat, you know, attack and reform bad habits of people. How they wanted to reform the society. And also you should mention Thomas Hobbes's philosophy, which is the foundation for neoclassicism. Then, most of our amusement. So, uh, I, I, that, that is a little bit. Those who have attended my course will understand more. Otherwise, I'll do another session. Now, most of our amusement in reading Pride and Prejudice comes from our being aware of differences between appearance and reality that go unperceived by the characters themselves. Appearance and reality. Zafar, what do you mean by getting JRF? Getting JRF means answering one or two more questions in the exam than you need to pass net. If you answer five more questions correctly, you will get JRF. That is how it is. Answer as many questions as possible more, then you will get JRF. If you study this syllabus, definitely, if you, if you get questions from the syllabus, you will be able to answer. That's all. There is no special syllabus for JRF or anything. Many coaching centers people make it look like for JRF you need some other syllabus. <laughs> it is not so. For JRF you need to answer some more questions in the exam. That's all. Isn't it? So, same syllabus, same thing for net and JRF. You need to be a real good student in order to get JRF. That's all. Which you will be. So, Pride and Prejudice, theme of appearance and reality. 
For example, Darcy appears to be very proud. He is proud. But appearance is not all. Because there is another good man also in Darcy. This is related to 18th century realism. You have to relate it to 18th century realism. In Tom Jones, Tristram Shandy, etc. This appearance and uh, reality is a very important issue. And it is related to uh, middle class culture. So that way you can analyze pride and prejudice. Fielding is not as sympathetic towards women as he is towards men. Do you agree? In Tom Jones, for example, uh, Tom Jones is a rogue. You know, he's a rogue and ultimately everything co comes out well for him. He's doing so much wrong things. Fielding is definitely speaking like a male chauvinist. There, you have to apply some feminism here. In uh, Fielding, uh, class, you know, in Richardson, upper class men can do anything. That was how he wrote Pamela. Upper class men get away with rape attempt and abuse and all that. Fielding is showing that even lower class men can get away with it. All men, whether upper class or lower class, get away with their uh, wrongdoings. Whereas for women, conformity is important. Women are more uh, constrained in Fielding's novels. So you should analyze it. Now answer all of the following. You can analyze also Fitzpatrick, Tom, in Tom Jones again Fitzpatrick, in Tom Jones, uh, in Joseph Andrews, the character of Fanny. Now next question. Comment on the socio-political and political issues in Dickens in hard times. What are the socio-economic political issues? You have to talk about the self-made man, the image of the self-made man. You have to talk about the urban man, the urban versus rural culture. You can talk about working class culture. You can talk about utilitarianism. You can talk about um, women and their oppression. So many things are there in hard times. Discuss the predicament of the self in conflict with the social milieu in the mill on the floss. Mill on the floss is uh, auto, semi-autobiographical, a very strong woman. She wants to live her life the way she wants. But society does not allow her. Uh, Maggie Tulliver is suffering in many ways. She is in love with Philip Wackham. Society doesn't allow. She does not want to tie up her hair and look very uh, feminine. Society does not allow. She wants to be very close to her brother. Society does not allow. And uh, she is unnecessarily suspected for having run away with Stephen Guest also. So, so like that, many questions. Some more questions are there. Do you find any similarity between Test of the Durbables and a Greek tragedy? Uh, is there a tragic heroine here or tragic hero? Then critically examine the adventures of Huckleberry Finn as an attack on the institution of slavery. Abolitionism and civil war and uh, Huckleberry Finn, Jim's character... Examine the role uh, and also how uh, slavery is a, a larger metaphorical thing. Even Huck is feeling like a uh, enslaved by civilization. None of these is broad. They are all uh, textual questions also. Examine the role of determinism in Tests of the Devils. Determinism. Um, I have to read upon that. I don't know how to explain. Do you agree with the view that Gulliver suffers from a sense of identity crisis? Gulliver, especially in the last book, does suffer from identity crisis. Yes. He does not want to go back to humanity. He is feeling very, uh, in many ways, as human he is feeling, as Englishman he is feeling. He is criticizing his own identity in so many ways. So that is paper one. Now paper two they go. In paper two, critically comment in about 150 words. 
poetry from T.S. Eliot is there, Auden is there. These are all prescribed ones. Larkin, Ramanujan. Then answer all of the following. Discuss the paradox in Yeats's idea expressed in his last poems. Textual, you have to read last poems. Personification of nature, allusions to Greek mythology and the imagery of death. These devices dominate T.S. Eliot's poetry. Is there personification of nature in T.S. Eliot? Allusions to Greek mythology. You have to quote examples and show. How do the best plays of the theater of the absurd show in telling images, the alien, in telling images, alienation, bewilderment, frustrations of modern man? Talk about Beckett Pinder. Talk about Lucky Pozo. Lucky is being held on a rope. For example, uh, Ham and Clo Ham is confined to his wheelchair, but he has delusions of uh, grandeur. Uh, then birthday party. How he is going out of his mind because of existential guilt. So many examples you can find. That's an easy question actually. Uh, then, even while depicting the modern man suffering from negation and despair due to totalitarian rulers and warmongering governments, Auden speaks about an affirming flame of human connectedness. You have to refer to many books. Uh, you know, Auden's many poems you have to refer to. Did Larkin deserve the tag that Times gave him as the greatest post-war writer? Greatest post-war writer, can you call him? You can disagree also. You have to evaluate his merits and demerits. Do you think marriage as an institution is critiqued in Osborne's Look Back in Anger? Is marriage itself critiqued? You have to quote from the play and analyze. It would be wrong to seek Look Back in Anger's politics uh, in the content of Jimmy's monologues. Uh, instead, the politics is in their form. This is the story, uh, question. In Look Back in Anger, Jimmy's monologues are not the main point. It is the form, the passionate articulacy. You have to read the play, of course. Waiting for Godo is a joke on the theatrical experience itself. It is an invitation to the audience to get up and leave. It is a critique of theatrical experience itself. Wow. Though Ramanujan, as an emigre poet, wrote about the home left behind with a remote passion and irony, how relevant are his experiences to a contemporary Indian in a globalized world? The, you know, you have to, e you can easily write a lot of essays before the exam and then you will do well. Lord Jim, coping with guilt, shame and remorse. That is easy question. Scene of portrait of the artist as a young man. When Stephen sees a young girl wading in the river. It's an epiphany. It's a famous epiphany at the end of chapter 4. When Stephen sees the water lashing on the girl's legs. He realizes this is what I want. This physicality of life is what I want. It's a very sensuous image. A sensuous scene that he sees. What differences do you see between Mrs. Moral and Miss Gertrude as a maiden? Mrs. Moral is much more mature. Miss Gertrude thought that, you know, masculinity is everything. Mrs. Moral is more practical. She is more mature. She is a wonderful woman. You have to illustrate with the book. How does Foster depict the Indian colonial bureaucrats in a passage to India? There are different kinds of bureaucrats there. You can talk about the collector, Mr. Turton. You can talk about Ronnie Heaslop. You can talk about Cyril Fielding. You can talk about John McBride. All of them, if you talk about, it will be good. Uh, he is showing different, at, from ang different angles. Analyze the presentation of the caste problem and untouchability in Kantapura. So that is there. Then more questions on Mrs. Dalloway. Critically examine the motives used in Mrs. Dalloway. The Big Ben, Shakespeare's quotes, Cymbeline quote, trees and flowers, 
and their contribution to your understanding of the novel. Note the features of Kunzler Roman in portraits of the artist as a young man. What is Kunzler Roman and what are in what way do you see uh, our protagonist as a Stephen as a an artist? He is sensitive. He is making cushions and he his attitude to nature. So many related things are there. Then explain the comment that uh, in Mr. House of Mr. Biswas there's a comment. Great in macrocosm, the novel is also flawless in microcosm. That means the novel presents the general view as well as inner view of characters and situations. Macro view and micro view. Both are there. More questions are there. 250 marks, remember. Uh, India as a muddle. That is not difficult. In passage to India, India as a muddle. When I teach passage to India, I teach that. Then as Paul Morrill struggles in his relations with Clara and Mariam, he realizes in his subconscious mind that the shadow of his mother's possessive love for him is the basic reason for his unstable emotional state. True. His mother is a wonderful woman, but she is possessive. And even though she is not preventing him from anything, he feels it unable. He feels himself unable uh, to love anybody else. Even uh, he, he feels that with Miriam, he feels that with Clara. Then even though Kantapura, a small village is the setting for Raja Rao's novel, he has effectively presented the whole gamut of India, its caste system, religious and social traditions. How? Then Mrs. Dalloway explores the fragmented yet fluid nature of time. How is the nature of time related to reality? Explain through Clarissa and Septimus. Good question. Examine the view that portrait of the artist as a young man was innovatingly daring for his time. It's challenging attitude to family, homeland and Catholic church. That is the most basic thing about portrait of the artist. What role do memories of the past haunt Jim, Marlowe, Jewel, Stain in Lord Jim? All the characters and their memories. So that is the question paper. It is very challenging, not easy, but it is not impossible. And I am again and again saying, yes, you need an authentic reading, authentic critical perspective. Which I know from experience, by reading about these novels several times, I think without any preparation, I can answer probably half of these questions. And with preparation, uh, probably I will be able to answer, I think. So it is not impossible. But experience of reading, maturity of reading is important. And there are books and materials that will help you. If you want, you can study like this. As I told you, civil service is only one aim. Without civil, if, even if you don't get civil service, you can get other lower services like IRS, etc. Or with this preparation, you will be amazing scholars. You can do research properly. I, I want you to know that almost in every central university, if you go to JNU, if you go to uh, you know Hyderabad University, in MA, people are taught like this. People are trained like this only. So there is nothing so unusual about it. People going to central universities may be able to answer very easily. So don't worry. You can also do if you want. Uh, I would say all of you should give it a try. Try studying all this, reading these books, etc. Because then your standards will in increase a lot. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this long session. Thank you for watching and appreciating and I will surely share the PDF in the Telegram group. Okay guys, bye. See you on Monday now. Thank you. Will you please like the video everyone? Bye.
Good night. Have a beautiful weekend.